recent spats over solar panels and wine have some spectators wondering if there will be any lasting effects on either economy. Economist Henning Meyer is a senior visiting fellow at the London School of Economics, and he says he's confident that these, these issues will be resolved. There will always be some sort of uh, protectionism one way or the other. I think the wrong frame of reference here, if you wish so, is uh, the idea of free trade. Whether you have tariffs or non-tariff trade barriers or some sort of help for domestic economy, uh, some sort of help for domestic businesses, you will always have some sort of managed trade. And they will have to investigate in each particular case, you know, whether some of the fundamental rules have been breached. But uh, I don't think that this is going to end up in a big spat. The, the, the Chinese-European relationship is obviously very important. There's a tremendous amount of trade done on both sides. 24 hours after the EU decision, China has uh, stated that perhaps that it might look at the EU wines that are heading into China. What do you make of that? Yeah, well, obviously, that, that looks like uh, something, you know, uh, if you look into some of our business areas, we look into some of yours. Uh, as I said, you know, this is, this is uh, some sort of a very isolated uh, trade spread, and I don't think that this will blow out of proportion and, and end up in a, in a protectionist war or something like that. But trade is always managed. That's what we have to uh, bear in mind. You know, free trade is an illusion, uh, you know, and you have to deal with it. But how it is managed is a very important uh, question, and, I, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident uh, that these issues will be resolved. Henning, let me uh, shift gears here. The Eurozone out with their GDP figures for the area, 0.2%. Uh, on a contraction level. I mean, not a huge number in either direction, but I think it's important to note that the downside is less than the prior quarter. So therefore, is it safe to say that things are either at a bottom or in the process of getting better? Well, I don't think so. I mean, first of all, the previous quarter was minus 0.6%, which was uh, very, very bad indeed. And this is, again, the six, this is the sixth successive quarter of negative growth. And early indications for uh, retail in April show uh, that the figures were, again, worse than expected. So I don't think there is a, a relief here. The Eurozone is still in deep economic trouble. We look at the retail sales figures, which also came out as well for the month of April, down half a percent. The year-on-year -year figures were down a little over 1 percent, um, which isn't shocking by any means. Actually, it's quite consistent with the GDP figures. How much do we read into those retail sales? Well, I mean, it just shows that domestic demand is very weak. I mean, if you, if you have levels of unemployment we are seeing in particular hotspots in, uh, in the Eurozone, uh, and, and obviously, you know, investment is down as well because there's no need for companies to invest and, uh, you know, build up capacity because the demand is simply not there. Uh, and the governments are not doing anything. You know, the figures show the government impact was zero. Uh, so you have the recipe for prolonged recession, and this is what we're seeing in the Eurozone. Tell us what's Europe doing that's right and what they're doing that perhaps is wrong. Well, at the moment, uh, Europe, especially when trying to tackle the Eurozone crisis, is doing pretty much everything uh, wrong. I mean, the, the key thing here is, is uh, austerity. Uh, the, the idea that the government has to deleverage at the same time when the private sector is deleveraging. Uh, this, has, uh, this has been the main cause of the prolonged recession in the Eurozone, uh, which was predictably so. And the, even though the, the theoretical as well as empirical evidence is mounting uh, that this economic strategy is failing basically on all fronts, uh, there hasn't been any political change because a lot of governments are so politically invested in this particular strategy. So uh, unfortunately, we are still caught in a, in a failing uh, policy. Is it a situation where either we all win or we all lose? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, there has to be some sort of rebalancing uh, uh, to, that has to happen across the Eurozone. But also, we have to build a Eurozone that is, uh, that is sustainable in the long run, which will also involve uh, probably some sort of level, some level of uh, transfers within the, within the currency area. I mean, you, you cannot build uh, a common currency without some of the fundamental mechanisms that make currency areas work. So there is a lot of homework to be done there as well. And this, you know, this sort of structural reform of the Eurozone, uh, that will take a long time. Uh, you know, we are moving in that direction, but that's a slow process. But, uh, you know, the more short-term policy could actually help and uh, gain this time, help gain this time, uh, but this is not really happening. So I think that's one of the fundamental flaws of the political course at the moment.